The previous video showed you how to communicate the electronic structure or configuration of any element in the periodic table. This video will show you how the electron configuration of atoms in a molecule can be used to explain how a covalent bond forms between them. A covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons. Specifically, it involves pairing up unpaired electrons between nonmetal atoms. And don't forget, nonmetal atoms are on the right side of this arrow. The first point we're going to look at is that electron configuration can explain covalent bonding in molecules. And the first example we're going to look at is ammonia. Ammonia's chemical formula is NH3, which means one molecule of ammonia is made up of one nitrogen atom and three hydrogen atoms covalently bonded together. If we're going to model the covalent bonding happening within an ammonia molecule by using their electron configurations, then we should probably write them for each of the atoms involved. We could draw them, but that takes up too much space and time. Before we write out their electron configurations, we need to know how many electrons each of these elements contain. Then we need to remember the order of orbitals in which their electrons can fill. In the case of nitrogen, it has seven electrons, two in the sole 1s orbital, two in the sole 2s orbital, then, using Hund's third rule, the remaining three electrons have to singly occupy 2p's three orbitals, p1, p2, and p3. We could have written the last three electrons like this, as 2p3, but this can confuse us or prevent us in seeing the unpaired electrons available to participate in a covalent bond. So it's important to expand unfilled subshells like 2p so we can see what electrons are unpaired. In the case of hydrogen, each of them have one electron, so one electron occupies the sole orbital in the first shell, 1s. Now we can see that nitrogen will form three covalent bonds with three hydrogen atoms, as one of its unpaired electron pairs up with the first hydrogen's unpaired electron. Another of nitrogen's unpaired electron pairs up with the second hydrogen's unpaired electron. And the other unpaired electron in nitrogen pairs up with the third hydrogen's unpaired electron. Remember that a covalent bond is the pairing up of unpaired electrons to form a shared pair of electrons. We can also show the bonding of these orbitals using dot cross diagrams. Let's start with nitrogen. Nitrogen has two shells. The first shell is occupied by two electrons, while the second shell is occupied by two, three, four, and five electrons. Since the electrons in nitrogen's second shell are its outermost electrons, then these electrons are considered valence shell electrons. And as a result, we only need to show these electrons 
because this shell contains electrons that can only participate in covalent bonding. Meaning, we do not need to show the electrons that are not in the second shell or outermost shell, because they will not participate in any covalent bonding. Therefore, nitrogen's valence shell is made up of two 2s electrons and three 2p electrons. In the case of a hydrogen atom, it has only one shell and one electron occupying the only orbital in this shell, which is 1s. All three of the hydrogens seen here have their first shell as their valence shell, which only has one electron in a 1s orbital. In a previous slide, we saw that one of the hydrogens, 1s electron, pairs up with an unpaired electron in nitrogen to form the first covalent bond. With a second hydrogen and its unpaired electron in 1s, pairing up with another unpaired electron in nitrogen to form the second covalent bond. While the third and last hydrogen and its unpaired electron in a 1s orbital pairs up with another unpaired electron in nitrogen to form the third covalent bond. giving us a complete dot cross diagram of ammonia. The second point to this lesson is that electron configuration can also show areas of electron density, specifically around the central atom in a molecule. The central atom in a molecular formula is the element with the lowest or smallest number. Again, let's use ammonia as our example. If we look at the molecular formula of ammonia, we have one nitrogen and three hydrogens. Therefore, nitrogen would be our central atom. The nitrogen in ammonia has four areas of electron density. Three of these areas are occupied by bond pair electrons, leaving the remaining one area occupied by a lone pair of electrons. A bond pair is a pair of valence electrons that is being shared between two atoms, while a lone pair is a pair of valence electrons that is not being shared between two atoms. Now let's take the same ideas and apply them to water. Water's chemical formula is H2O, which means one molecule of water is made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms covalently bonded together. Since oxygen has the lowest number in this molecular formula, it is considered the central atom in this molecule. Before we write out their electron configurations, we need to know how many electrons each of these elements contain. Oxygen has eight electrons. Two of these electrons will occupy the sole 1s orbital. Another two will occupy the sole 2s orbital. Then using Hund's rule, have three of oxygen's electrons singly occupy three of 2p's orbitals. With the last electron pairing up with the single electron in the 2p1 orbital. In the case of hydrogen, these two atoms each have one electron, and as a result, this one electron 
occupies the sole orbital in the first shell, which is 1s. Now we can see that the central atom, oxygen, has two unpaired electrons and will therefore form two covalent bonds with the two hydrogen atoms. We can also show the bonding of these orbitals using dot cross diagrams. Let's start with the central atom, oxygen, which has two shells. But remember, we only need to show the outermost valence shell because it is the only shell whose electrons participate in any covalent bonding. In oxygen's valence shell, there is a 2s orbital that is occupied by two electrons. There is also one 2p orbital that is also occupied by two electrons. And there are two 2p orbitals, each containing an unpaired electron. In the case of the hydrogen atoms, a hydrogen only has one shell and one electron occupying the only orbital in this shell, which is 1s. Both hydrogen atoms have their first shell as their valence shell, which only has one electron in its 1s orbital. In a previous slide, we saw that one of the hydrogen's 1s electron pairs up with an unpaired electron in oxygen to form the first covalent bond. And the second or last hydrogen with its unpaired electron in its 1s orbital pairs up with the other unpaired electron in oxygen to form the second covalent bond. giving us a complete dot cross diagram of water. If we were to describe the electronic structure of the central atom, which is oxygen, we would see that oxygen has four areas of electron density. two areas of bond pairs, and two areas of lone pairs. Now let's look at a diatomic molecule and how multiple bonding can also be modeled using electron configuration. Nitrogen's chemical formula is N2 which means one molecule of nitrogen is made up of two nitrogen atoms covalently bonded together. Since we only have two atoms bonded together, there is no central atom in this molecule. And before we write out their electron configurations, we need to know how many electrons each of these elements contain. Each nitrogen atom has seven electrons, two electrons in a 1s orbital, two electrons in a 2s orbital. Then, using Hund's rule, place three electrons singly occupying the three orbitals of 2p. Since there is no central atom, to find out the number of covalent bonds between these two atoms, Simply draw lines pairing up the unpaired electrons, where each pairing represents a covalent bond. We can also show the bonding of these orbitals using dot cross diagrams. Remember that for each bonded atom, we only need to show their valence shell and valence shell electrons.
Each of these atoms have three unpaired electrons. And although it appears impossible to bring these three electrons together, it actually isn't. And now that we have a complete dot cross diagram of nitrogen, we can still describe the electronic structure of the atoms within this molecule. Each of the nitrogen atoms in a nitrogen molecule have two areas of electron density. One side of lone pair and one side of bond pairs.